This is Dr. Nurse Storms in the lab, and in this little installment, I'm going to be talking about the chemical exposure. And that's probably our biggest problem as organic chemists. We are going to be exposed to chemicals, we work with them, we can't avoid it. We're going to get some on our hands, we're going to get some on our skin. So you have to think about, and this is the thing I feel so passionate about and adamant about, it is so important that you attire yourself properly in the lab, and for whatever reason, I, I, I'm constantly saying this, and I constantly see people who are not dressed properly. You must protect yourself, even if you're a little uncomfortable. I have worn goggles in lab for 25 years, and if you think I like to wear goggles, you're wrong. I don't like to wear goggles. I sweat. They give me headaches. I don't like them, but you know what? When I was a... a Early in my career, I went to a safety convention and they showed us films of what happens to people when they have those stupid plastic safety shields on or just wearing glasses. If there's an explosion, they blow off and they are not chemical spill proof. You have to have something strapped to your head that goes completely around your eye. And if you don't believe that, seriously, I, I, I'm, someday I'm going to bring in a film of what happens when you don't have these on, okay? Those safety shields are next to useless, okay? You shouldn't be wearing them, all right? That's all I'm saying. So you should have these on, gloves on, apron, or a lab coat, shoes covering your feet. Do you know where the chemicals fall? The chemicals fall on your feet. This attire is what will protect you the most in the laboratory and what has protected me for 25 years, okay, from getting a serious burn or injury from chemicals. Um, so that's what I would say to you first. How else do you protect yourself? You protect yourself from work by working in the hood and keeping the hood doors the way I described, the way I've described through these videos. The hood doors should be down at a level where you have a green velocity. It should be as down as far as you can get it. How else do you correct, uh, protect yourself? You protect yourself by keeping things clean. Wipe things up this semester, you know? Take out a sponge, wipe down this area, then dry it off with a paper towel. Wipe out your hood at the end of the day. We do clean. Um, this lab gets cleaned several times a week, but the thing is, occasionally there's a drip of something. Don't lean on these um, foils. They're called foils. Don't lean on them. We've gotten people who have burns on their forearms because they were leaning on the foil and there's a little bit of acid on the front foil. Never sit on the bench. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people sitting on the benches. I wouldn't sit on these benches. There's acids, bases, all kinds of crud on these benches. One time we were isolating cap capsaicin, okay? Capsaicin is the active ingredient in red hot chili peppers. I had I went in, over into the lab without gloves on and just touched the surface of the bench and I had it all over me. I was burning. Don't sit on the benches and never sit on the floor. Okay, if you get tired, leave the lab. Go sit outside, sit on a stool. That's what we have the stools for. This is really important, okay? You have to protect yourself, so be clean. If you spill something, let someone know and they will tell you how to clean it up, okay? When you are cleaning your glassware, Always start with cold water. Sometimes it's a good idea to start rinsing in the hood and pour things down the drain, the cup sink, keeping the fumes down. Then go to the regular sink and use cold water and maybe some soap and a brush. Then when you're done with that, use more cold water, maybe some distilled water. Then use acetone, then use some distilled water, okay? If you do that, you'll minimize your exposure. Sometimes people get exposure when they go over to the sink, turn hot water on, and run it into a flask that has materials in it. Make sure you ask before you dump anything. And I want to reiterate, no chemicals, zero, should go into those trash bins. And I mean zero. Okay? What goes down the drain is aqueous waste. And if you have any doubt about what is aqueous waste, you should ask your TA or your instructor. Halogenated waste goes into two containers that we have in this central room. Okay, one is labeled halogenated waste, one is labeled non-halogenated waste. 
These are only for organic materials. So for example, if you had dichloromethane, you could dump it into that container. If you had, say, hexane, you could dump it into this container. But if you had sodium chloride, the salt, you would not put it in the halogenated waste. Halogenated waste is for organic materials. Sodium chloride, where would it go? Down the drain. That's, a, that's an example, excuse me, of aqueous waste. Anything else you should ask about it, the TA, the instructor will collect it. We do not put anything in the trash. Imagine if you were a worker here and you went into the trash and found a big pile of some, you know, red solid sitting in the trash. That would be a little worrisome, okay, in terms of exposure for them. Okay, so you have to protect other people as well. So what I just described is protecting yourself, protecting your environment, okay, and then disposing of things properly and cleaning things properly so you don't get exposed at the end of the day, all right? What do you do if you get exposure, okay? What do you do if you get chemicals on your skin, okay? The universal remedy that we use is 15 minutes of cold water. And I often tell the story of my friend from graduate school who got sprayed all over his forearms with concentrated sulfuric acid, okay? We took this guy, brought him over to the sink, took the hose out, and we sprayed him down for 10 or 15 minutes. This was a very bad exposure, okay? It was 18 molar sulfuric acid all over his arms. He had welts all over his arms. We then proceeded to cross the street to the, the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania where he waited for two hours in the emergency room. And then after two hours, they put him in what is called burn shower, okay? It, didn't do any, it wouldn't do any good at that point. When you get chemical exposure, your best defense is if you take immediate action and in 99% of the cases, 15 minutes of cold water is the way to go. There are a few exceptions. One is bromine. Okay, bromine has to be treated differently. It actually has to be neutralized. But other than that, tremendous rinsing with water is what's going to save you. If you get it on your clothes, you got to get the clothes off and rinse underneath the clothes. Okay. Um, earlier, I did show how to use the wash, eye wash fountain. I'm going to show it one more time. I will tell you, most people do not get chemicals in your, their eyes because they are not wearing goggles. Most people get chemicals in their eyes because something itches on their face. And I have a habit of touching my face all the time. And they take their finger and they put it up under the goggles. And when they do that, they get chemicals in their eyes. Some people just get vapor trapped in these goggles, okay? But people do get chemicals in their eyes when they're not wearing goggles. Now, it has been shown that it is actually just as safe to wear contact lenses under goggles as it is to wear glasses under goggles. We used to make people take their contacts off. So supposing you put your finger up here, you got a little bit of something in your eye, your eyes burning, what would you do? As I stated before, you would come over to one of these islands, you would take your goggle off, you would take your gloves off, okay? If you have contact lenses, you gotta get them out, okay? You've gotta get those contacts out. You take the hose, you create the arc that I described earlier. Oh, I just started my, started my camera. Sorry about that. You create the arc. I'm terrible at creating the arc, as you can see. You would open your eyes, put it into the water, and keep it in there for 15 minutes. And if it was two eyes, you'd have to hold your eyes open and someone else would have to create the arc. The cap is always kept on this to keep the dust out of it, okay? Now again, a straight on, projection of water would, um, could damage your cornea because the, the water pressure is really high. Um, we have four of these, two on each side of the room. It's really important to let someone know what happened and it's really important to do something about it. Okay, so keep these things in mind as you continue on because sometimes in the spring people forget what the safety rules are. Okay, thank you. Have, have a good time in lab.